Chapter 4, Teenage Politics. Hey, Eric, how was your first day of school? Dad is sitting on the couch with his feet up when I walk in through the kitchen door. Hi, Dad. School's all right. You're home earlier than I thought you'd be, I say. Yeah, I decided I'd had enough for the day. This new place needs a lot of work. I'm going to ease my way into it, he says, turning the TV off. So tell me about school. Get the place figured out yet? Seeing as how there are all about 15 people in the entire school, and the building is the size of a football field, I've got it figured out pretty well, I answer. I hope the small town simpletons can keep up with you, wise guy, he says, and throws a pillow at me. I catch the pillow and toss it back. Only time will tell. Mom enters the conversation, and then the room. Eric, did you see your new friends? Yes, I saw them, and spent pretty much the whole day with them. The school has two tracks, one for smart kids and one for dumb kids. I'm considered a smart kid, I explain. Of course you are, dear. Mom seems to say reflexively. Did you meet any other nice people? From the lilt of her voice and how she smiles, I know what she means. You mean, did I meet any other nice girls? I ask. Dad laughs at first, but then seconds Mom's question. Having had an unusually social day, I decided to answer their question rather than skirt the topic. Yes, I did, actually. I met a really nice girl named Rachel. Rachel Sutton. We had lunch together. My parents' faces freeze. I don't know if it's because I had lunch with a girl my first day at the new school or because I actually told them about it. Mom's excitement can't be contained for long. Yay, tell me about her. What grade is she in? What does she look like? Do you have classes together? Did you ask her out? Dad and I ignore the onslaught of questions with a knowing look at each other. But he has a question of his own, business related, of course. Sutton, you say? Any relation to the Sutton Slaughterhouse in Jefferson, just over the Cranston town line? Yeah, that's her family. Her dad runs the ranch and slaughterhouse. Apparently, it was her great-grandfather who founded them. And then her family has been out, out of state for, for a while. But now they're back. Our family moved here two years ago from Atlanta. How do you know about the slaughterhouse? It's the primary employer for non-ranchers in this town. I did plenty of research on the local economy before we moved here. Interesting fact, the ranch house, likely the one your friend lives in now, was a funeral home since the early 90s until, I suppose, her family moved back and reclaimed the family business. I read about that, but didn't understand the connection between a slaughterhouse and a funeral home. Well, I guess there's some kind of abstract, unpleasant connection, but it makes sense that if the family left, perhaps the slaughterhouse and the ranch were sold separately. Small towns have such interesting histories. That sounds like dad, business and trivia. That makes sense, I say. I'll have to ask Trent about the funeral home business. That, maybe that's where some of the rumors about Rachel's family come from. Come on, Eric. So what about Rachel? Mom has remained quiet for as long as she can, but she won't wait any longer. She has brown hair, I say. Following a substantial pause to let Mom's anticipation grow, I continue. She's a senior, too. We are in all the same classes. I haven't asked her out yet. I thought maybe I'd wait until at least 24 hours after she and I met before doing that. Fine, fine. You take your time, wise guy. Just keep me posted. Mom gets up from the sofa. What should we have for dinner tonight? Not spaghetti, I suggest. Do they have any pizza places in town? I don't think I noticed any. No pizza in town, Dad says, and then asks, what are our viable options? He follows Mom into the kitchen. I sit down in his place on the sofa and pick up the remote. Dinner went well. We ended up having meatloaf. Mom and Dad had more questions for me about my day at school, and I was forthright with the answers. Then the conversation moved on to Dad's experiences thus far. I'm not embarrassed to admit I didn't pay attention very well. I did think about Rachel a little bit, but not exclusively. Now it's time to do some homework, but first I think I'll do a little personal research on Facebook. I log in to find a friend request from Jesse waiting for me. This makes things a little easier. I was going to add her, Trent, and Michael anyway, but now I don't have to search. Based on the reaction of Rachel towards Trent and Jesse, I doubt she has them as friends, but I'll check their lists. I was right. How about Michael? Nope. Now for the name search. No Rachel Suttons that matched the pale girl. How about Sutton Slaughterhouse? A few hits as a place of employment, but overall there's no business page or anything like that. No one with the last name Sutton associated with it either. either. Rachel isn't on Facebook? How does she keep up with her friends from Atlanta? Maybe she has one of those code name things for her profile to prevent people from creeping on her like I'm trying to do right now. Thwarted in my recon mission, I decided to resort to homework. I don't mind schoolwork so much. I actually enjoy learning. Sometimes I don't care to learn what the syllabus demands at a certain time and in a certain way, but overall I enjoy learning. So school isn't so bad. Still, I won't miss high school at all. I hope college is a bit more enjoyable. I'm sure it will be. It can't be any worse, right? After two hours of reading what I needed to read and writing what I needed to write, I decided to go to sleep. Lying in bed, I rehearsed scenarios in my head for the next day, planning for what to say to Rachel and wondering about when I'll see her, either before school or in class, and whether or not she'll talk to me right away or wait until no one is around like last time. I think I'll go in a little bit early just in case she's there early too. And then there is lunchtime to consider. 
I prefer to spend it with Rachel again, but I did promise the Jansons I'd do lunch with them. I can try to organize a situation where we all have lunch together, but until I find out a little bit more about this rift between Rachel and the townies, I think I'll keep these two friendship groups separated. You gotta keep them separated. And like that, I guess I'll fall asleep on a distraction from the classic rock music. The offspring is considered classic by now, right? Tuesday morning brings bright sunshine. Not a cloud to be seen anywhere in the expanse of Texas sky. With Cranston qualifying as a desert and the clouds all rolling out overnight, the temperature is a bit brisk when I walk out the front door. But with the way the sun is rising fast and filling the sky, I don't expect it will be long before things warm up. I enacted my early arrival plan with some skillful verbal maneuvering. Mom asked if I wanted the car again, but I turned her down, stating that I'd prefer to get to know the process of walking to school, just to see how long it takes. In reality, I want to walk to school for two reasons. First, so that I won't have a car in case Rachel wants to offer me a ride home. And secondly, I can leave a lot earlier under the guise of not knowing how long it will take me to walk in. My perfect plan fooled Mom. She didn't seem suspicious of my wanting to walk at all. I kind of thought she would. This indicates I even fooled myself with my plan. Not bad for a Tuesday morning. I'm still not sure what to do about lunch. I suppose there's always the possibility that Rachel won't mention it to me. And then I'll wimp out and not say anything to her. I want to ask the clique what their lunch plans are before I see Rachel. I hope my no car plan pays off. Walking to school is fine for some people, but if I have access to a car, I'd rather drive. Then there was always riding my bike, which is what I expected I would be doing most days anyway, not counting on having the car. Of course, I can't very well give Rachel a ride home on my bike, so that option is out. The things we do for cute girls we barely know, with reputations of being strange. But not as strange as her parents, that's what Trent said. I wonder what is so strange about her parents. Something to do with funeral homes and slaughterhouses, no doubt. People are pretty predictable sometimes. I'm sure it will come out eventually, and when it does, I'll know if my prediction is right. Trent doesn't seem to be too tight-lipped, and if it's true what Rachel said about the rumor and gossip habits of Cranston, then I'll know all the misinformation I want to know in short order. I have a pleasant walk to school. It's a pretty direct route, just a few streets to navigate, so it isn't difficult to become familiar with, but walking does help me to recognize the buildings and shops on Main Street. There's one diner in addition to Josie's. seems to be geared more towards breakfast, but it is a 24-hour operation. It's right next to the gas station mobile pumps and a small small two-bay auto repair garage there's a small market or convenience store along with basic groceries and whatever else called the cranston general store it has probably been there since the town was founded it looks like they've modernized it pretty well at least on the inside from what i could tell walking by the window there's a hardware store that doubles as a farm equipment retailer i suppose they have auto parts there as well i didn't see any signs anywhere else for that type of product the combination barber shop and salon sits on the corner of main street and school street and was the last business i passed on my way in between Main Street and the school are just houses, nothing fancy, small yards and one-story single-family homes. Most don't even have a garage, pretty different from the areas where we lived before. We've been in large two-story suburban houses and multi-floor apartment buildings. I like the small house we have now. It's a good size for us. My parents actually bought this one as opposed to renting, like they usually do. I guess they actually plan on staying in Cranston for a while. Only time will tell for me. Just like yesterday, I spot Trent in the parking lot, but this time the rest of the crew is with him as well. They are leaning against Trent's truck and all but Chrissy are facing away from me. She doesn't pay any attention to me as I walk up. Probably probably because we've only seen each other the one time outside Josie's. I'm at the back of the truck before I say hello. Jessie jumps a bit. She has a good startle reflex, apparently. A chorus of hellos issues forth. Didn't see you drive in, Trent says in a half-questioning statement. I walked today, I say. You should have called. We could have picked you up, Jessie offers. Thanks, but it's not a problem. I could have driven in, but I chose to walk today for the experience. I was curious how long it would take to make the walk. Looks like I allowed way more time than was necessary. Checking, a wa checking my watch, I note that it's 20 minutes since I left home. And also, I don't have anyone's phone number. Ah, that's right. Give me your phone, Jessie commands. I hand over my phone, and she enters a couple of numbers. I listen in as Michael and Trent continue their conversation from before I walked up. Jessie hands my phone back to me. There, now you have our numbers, and I have yours. I texted myself from your phone. Solid, I say. Now, where did you say you live? Jessie asks. On Earp Street, headed away from... Here is the first right on it's the first right on First Street. Oh yeah, my friend Chris lives over there. I know where it is. She smiles, content with her sense of awareness, I suppose. Yeah. So I didn't drive today, but what is the plan for lunch? Do you all want to head out somewhere? I didn't bring any food, just money. I don't have any other small talk to make, so I stick with the script I've been rehearsing. Josie's or the diner or the general, but they don't really have any lunch options. Sometimes we just get snack foods instead of lunch type food, Michael says. We could just do the cafeteria, says Trent. I don't have any real cravings for anything today. Cafeteria food will suffice. Well, that would simplify things, I guess. If we get lunch here, then it shouldn't be much work to get Rachel to join us, unless she's planning to leave for lunch. 
If we stay, I vote for eating outside. It's way too nice out to sit in the cafeteria. Jesse doesn't offer a preference for what to eat or where to get the food from, just where to eat it. I don't care what y'all do. I'll be eating in the cafeteria like I'll be eating alone in the cafeteria like usual. Chrissy joins the conversation, only to be met with some cries of fake sympathy from Michael and Jesse. Let's eat here today. Trent gives the final word on the subject. I decided to bail out of the conversation now that this part of my reconnaissance is completed. Cool, cafeteria it is. I mean, for food, then eating outside. I give a slight bow towards Jesse. I'm going to head inside now. I'm going to hit the bathroom before class starts. Good luck, Michael says with a wave. Thanks. See y'all later, I say, unaware of using the jargon. You're getting the language fast, Jesse says as I smile and turn, waving behind me as I walk towards the school. Under my breath, I say, yeehaw. It's a short chapter. So that was a quick one. Maybe I'll read another one this week. That was fast. Um, hopefully I'm reading less like a robot, but we'll see. I don't know. It's still fun. I wrote it, so maybe it's, I don't know. There's something unique about hearing the author read their own words, perhaps, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why I'm talking now. I'm just here to read the chapter. So that was the chapter. Um, but still, if uh, so, if anybody figures out what the there, what did I say in the first video I made before I started reading them? There, I forget what I said. I don't want to give away too many details. But there's like a in the I guess well what is, whatever the chapter the chapter titles mean something. What is the meaning? That's what I'm asking. Tell me what it means. I'll send you a book or not. Maybe I will. <laughs> maybe it's not too expensive. <laughs> uh, and I'll send you a book. Tell me what the tell me what the chapter headings or what the chapters are about. I don't know. I gave it away too much. Now it's not. No, it's not as cryptic. Okay, whatever. So that was chapter four, right? Yeah, that was chapter four. Yeah. Uh, and I'll do maybe I'll do chapter five this week as well because that one's short. I hope you're enjoying listening to the book. I'm enjoying reading it, even as awkward as and uncomfortable as it feels. Sometimes I'm still enjoying it because this is my thing. So thanks for listening to the book. And if you want, go buy it. Amazon's got it. It'll be great. You'll never regret it. Probably. Bye.